Let's look at the second case. I'm going to copy over the two pages and we're going to start from here. The first few steps are the same. Case 2. We start defining the Lagrangian, then we find out what is the V, what is the S, and what is the lambda transpose times F minus X dot. Then we'll do the same thing, we'll find optimal control using partial L, partial U, that is equal to zero, that is this. And the second differential equation is from the same equation, partial L, partial X minus D dt, partial L, partial X dot is equal to zero. And the third set of differential equation is a partial L, partial lambda, that is equal to zero. So all these equations are the same. So it means the differential equations that we're going to solve, that's the same. So the only difference comes from the boundary conditions. So let's look at the boundary conditions in the second case. So I'm going to delete all this because these are exactly the same. So in the second case, we only focus on the boundary conditions. In the second case, we are dealing with uh, the free final conditions. And on top of this, we also have the initial condition boundary conditions. Let's see how we translate these boundary conditions into equations that we can solve the problem. So the initial condition is pretty straightforward. So here xf is fixed, which is 4, 6, but tf is free. When tf is free, it means the coefficient to the delta tf should be 0. So this coefficient has to be 0. Let's see what this condition is. The L function has these three terms. Let me just copy that over. So these are the ev everything we need. So that's a half x1 tf square plus 2x2 tf square plus 4u tf. This is a, just the first term. The second term is this. So x1 is at uh, evaluated at tf as well. This f11 is uh, giving at the 3. And uh, f22 is uh, 5. And these are all evaluated at uh, tf. And the third term is here. So lambda 1 at a tf plus x2 at a tf. Oh, it's a super long. We just finished the first term. Is a tf minus 2x1 tf plus 3u at a tf minus x2 dot at a tf. So this is just the first term, L star at a time tf minus a partial L partial x dot transpose time x dot. Let's find a partial L over partial x1 dot. So luckily we did that before, right? So we can just copy the result that we did. Partial L partial x dot. So we did one time here, so which is this. So we'll have this times the x1 dot at a tf. And uh, these are all at a time tf. And the f11 is a 3. The last term is a partial l partial x2 dot times x2 dot. Partial l over partial x2 is here. f22 is uh, 5. times x2 dot at a time tf. And uh, these are all evaluated at time tf. Let's put a time tf here. And a time tf here. Let's uh, clean this up. <laughs> See what we have. It's a pretty long formula. Let's copy this to the next page. Let's see how we simplify this. So some terms can be cancelled. This term will be this term will be cancelled, and uh, this two, this term lambda two times x two dot will be cancelled with a. Uh, This is number 2 times x2 dot. This term will have a 3 times uh, x1 minus 4. 
3 times x1 minus 4 times x1 dot, right? This term is a cancel. So you have this term gone. And uh, this term with a 5 times x2 dot, and you have a negative 5 minus 2 times x2 dot, this term is gone. So this is just additional parentheses I can delete. And uh, this will be negative 2 times x2 plus 3u. That's it. I don't see anything else that can be simplified. We require this to be 0. At this final time, this needs to be equal to 0. Let's see how many boundary conditions that we have. So we have four different equations, right? And uh, since the tf is free now, tf will become one unknown variable. So we have uh, in total five equations to solve for five unknowns, then we'll be able to get the answer. Let's put that into the equation into case two and see how we solve it. So let's copy this over because most of them are the same. So here the boundary conditions include x1, 0, x2, at 0, and f11 here. Uh, they are giving as uh, some values, uh, but we already uh, we already put those values in, so we do we do not care about that. Uh, here, tf is unknown, and uh, x1 tf is equal to four, x2 tf is equal to six. So these are the the five boundary conditions. Tf is unknown, but we got one condition here. It tells us half x1 tf square plus 2x2 two two square at time tf plus 4u uh, since it's like these equations we do not uh, really have u right we want to replace u by uh, lambda because we have x1 x2 and uh, we want to find a relationship between u and uh, lambda u is equal to this so it's uh, something we already put into this uh, variable s. Let's continue. Let's write that out. So x2 square plus 4u square plus lambda 1 tf times x2 tf plus lambda 2 tf times negative 2 x1 tf plus 3u at a time tf. This whole thing is equal to 0. So we have five different five equations. The first one is uh, x1 dot at t0 is equal to 1. That's correct. This is uh, still correct. Um, and uh, tf is not known. So we don't know tf. And we'll define a tf to be a symbol. So this x1 dot at tf is equal to 4. x2 dot at tf is equal to 6. So there's one more equation that will help us to solve um, tf together with the others. This equation will be this whole thing. And this has to be equal to 0. x1 at a tf. Here we need to replace x1 by sub 1 at a time tf. So that's the value of x1 tf. So x1 tf will be replaced by sub s dot x1 at a time tf. So this is x1 tf replace and there's another term replace okay and uh, at the same time we're going to replace x2 at a tf by sub s dot x2 at a tf replace and a replace and I replace the lambda by s sub lambda 1 as well so this is the lambda uh, we're going to do sub lambda tf a replace and there is only one uh, plus and we also need to, so we also have lambda 2t, right? So lambda 2tf, we're going to replace that by s dot lambda 2tf, uh, replace. So it looks like we only have one of that. Since we already put a u into the uh, structure of s, so we can replace u by s dot utf, uh, replace. Uh, replace 
So we only have two places that have a U. So that's how we got the last equation. And then we can see what we get from this equation. So from, by solving this equation, we got a C1, C2, C3, but at the same time we got a, a TF. And if you want to run the code, and it will select a twice two. So you select twice two, then it will run the twice two. And in twice two, TF is uh, not defined. And we need to solve for TF. And then we're going to plot the result from zero uh, to TF. And this is the same, the same, the same. And let's see what we get. Start from the initial condition of one to two, uh, one two to four. Why did you not reach the four and six? Uh, because we plotted it in the way that you did not finish all the way. So if we if we want to take a look at our TF, so TF is zero point seven five nine, uh, but our plot only come to zero point seven. It did not come all the way to TF. Uh, there is a way that we can solve this. If I make it a 0.01, I'll be able to see more data because I will be able to see more than 0.7. So let, let me show you. If you just change the time step to be 0.01 and you run the code, uh, you will be able to see that you're getting closer to the final date. Oh, it's still busy. I think it had a little bit of hard time to solve the problem symbolically. So you can see that unable to solve symbolically, then it returns our numerical solution. You can see that the last data point here that is 0 0.75 because we use a time step of 0 0.01, so it will only get it to 0 0.75, and we won't be able to see uh, anything beyond that. But we can see that the uh, final state gets very close to four and six. If you want to make it look much closer. And something we can do is that we define the number of points uh, instead of uh, the fixed time step. So to do that, we can do num points, and we can say no matter what, give me 20 points. And you can do tf divided by uh, num points. So in total, this will give us 21 points uh, because from t0 to tf. So let's see that. All right. So now you can see that uh, the final state is a uh, four and a six. This four, and uh, here it, uh, you get to six. And the final time is zero point seven five eight nine two four. All right. So let's just save the result. Copy paste. So we got the boundary conditions, and we applied the boundary condition. Uh, we got the performance, and uh, this is the states, and. Uh, we also, let's also copy the optimal control over. So let's look at this problem again. We'll work on the Hamilton formalism. To give you a very quick review, this is how we define the Hamiltonian. is equal to V plus lambda transpose times F. To get optimal control, we just need to let partial H, partial U is equal to zero. And the differential equations include the dynamics, X dot is equal to partial H, partial lambda, and uh, also the co-state equation lambda dot is equal to negative partial h partial x. And the boundary condition it depends depends on the problem. This is the general form. So it depends on whether your TF is free or not, and uh, whether XF is free or not. You may have a different boundary conditions. So the first step is uh, define the Hamiltonian function, uh, which is the same as what we did before. It's v plus lambda transpose t. And we find we have v and a lambda transpose times uh, f is equal to that. And to find optimal control, we get this. And uh, then we uh, plug this optimal control into the Hamiltonian. We get an optimal Hamiltonian. After that, we apply uh, the two differential equations. And this is what we have. And from here, we also solved these differential equations, which give us functions with some constant length. And we need to apply the boundary condition so that we can solve the problem. Step one to step four, they are exactly the same. We're not going to repeat. Um, we're going to start from step five. Step five, apply the boundary conditions. Let's see what are the boundary conditions are. The first boundary condition is the initial condition. Uh, x zero is one, two. The next boundary condition, let's copy this over. X one zero is equal to one, x two zero is equal to two. That is a straightforward. 
and we just need to figure out what that is. We need to derive that from the general form. This is what I have in the general form. And here tf is free. tf is free means delta tf is not zero. And delta tf is not zero means the coefficient is equal to zero. And it gives us this is equal to zero. And xtf here is a given. 4, 6. Eventually we want the robot to reach 4, 6. That is given. So delta xf is equal to zero. So we do not need to worry about this at all. Right? So we just need to work on this. And uh, what is this? H plus partial s partial t. H have two terms. One term is v and the other one is lambda transpose time f. And what is our s function? s function is defined here. S function. Partial S partial T. Let's see what that is. Is this a function of T? No, it's not related to T, right? So that's why that is a zero, and we just need to work on this. So this term is evaluated at the time TF. And remember, X1 is the X star here. So uh, that is uh, optimal. So at a TF, TF. Tf x2 Tf lambda 2 Tf 2 times x1 Tf plus 3u Tf uh, that is equal to 0. So this is a new boundary condition. Let's uh, solve the problem. Compare the Hamilton formalism with uh, the Lagrangian formalism. The first boundary condition, the first two boundary conditions are the same, and this fixed boundary condition is also the same. We just need to compare the last one. Let's see what the last one is. Now the last boundary condition is that plus lambda 1 x2, lambda 1 x2 plus lambda 2 tf times negative 2 x1 plus 3u, negative 2 x1 plus 3u. That's the same boundary condition, right? So it means everything is the same, the result is also the same. So it's over here.